Hello everyone, this is going to be a demonstration of the painting on the right, start to finish. And you'll notice along with the painting I have some flesh tones and I've dragged where those flesh tones are on the painting to show you. On the left is the full palette at the end of the painting. At the start of the painting, the colors I had were more generalized uh, and I modified them. So let's start there. All right, let's mix some flesh tones. So one of the first things you'll notice is the color of the palette. I have talked to you guys about painting on a, a gray ground. This ground is acrylic gesso and raw umber mixed together, acrylic raw umber of course, mixed to a little bit lighter than a mid-tone gray. I painted the wood underneath this glass palette with the same color as I put on the paintings. That way, the way the paint looks on the palette is a better predictor for the way it's gonna look on the painting. Now. If you're not sure how to organize your palette, just copy the way I organize mine. But you, you want your paints on the outside. And I have mine organized warm colors, dark to light, which I've labeled for you, and cool colors, dark to light, which I've also labeled. If you're not sure, just copy mine. If you don't stay consistent, it can end up being very frustrating. If you were texting someone and all the letters on your keypad we're in a different place every time you want to text it would be very frustrating so let's not do that on the palette uh, I have color notes so from painting models a lot I keep color notes with flesh tones which is a really good idea right so here's some here's some notes I have that it's ended up being I showed you a more extensive chart uh, with specific models on it but these have been pretty useful so I'm gonna mix up about six of these so maybe I'll put it here, like this, I'll stick it in here, so I can have a look and just sort of match my way through my color notes, just to help you guys mix some color. So I'm primarily gonna use the, the primaries, cobalt blue, cadmium red, medium, cadmium yellow light. For these darkest ones, I might need to go a little bit darker, like the ultramarine blue. I have the burnt sienna up here. I'm not really using the earth tones in here more, I tend to use those more for like a mixed black, right? So if I if I have the ultramarine and burnt sienna, they, they balance each other really well. So for hair or that kind of thing, maybe I want to just use this. All right, so that way I have like a, a little bit bluer, it's cooler. So even though this isn't exactly a flesh tone, I still think it's useful to start here because I use this all the time to start drawing things in mapping things out. Burnt sienna and ultramarine are good to balance each other. You want to be careful with your burnt sienna because sienna is not really, it's just a place in Italy, it's not a chemically specific color name. Like, uh, like one of those Pantone colors. So now I'm going to start mixing up the flesh tones. I'm going to start with these really dark ones in here. I have cadmium red deep on here. I'm I'm not gonna use it. Let's see how dark we can get with cadmium red medium. And again, I want to be. I'm gonna try to be really organized and work dark to light. I'm picking a dirty spot on the palette, right here. That way, I can keep my palette a little more organized, right? If I again, glass palette's good. I can always scrape it off to clean it. Wooden palettes are great too. So I want to start for that one. I'm going to use ultramarine, it's a little bit darker blue, also less expensive blue than cobalt blue. It's slightly redder than cobalt blue. So that's actually kind of close, maybe a little too red. I really just want like the, the darkest values, I don't want to have any white. It looks like it's a little too red maybe in between those two, so I'll add more blue. Now when you're mixing, you'll notice the cadmiums are much stronger than the other colors, right? Cadmium red is a strong color. So I add a little dot of the yellow. Now I have cadmium yellow light on here. For flesh tones, cadmium yellow medium would be fine, but for mixing in general, cadmium yellow light is really useful because it's the yellowest one. As cadmium goes from light to medium, to dark into red, it actually gets redder. So if you were outside and trying to mix a, a really clean green, you would have a really hard time if you're if you're just mixing with cadmium red, oh, sorry, cadmium yellow, medium or deep because those go redder. 
So that's a pretty good mixed dark flesh tone. And I'm just, if you have good color notes, you can just literally, you know, match what you had last time and keep notes about what you mixed it with last time. You notice on the side of this chart, it's got some little notes about what I mixed it with. So I would remember. At this point, I always remember, but so if I want to keep my palette clean, then I can put a little dab there and still have this dirty area. So I'm going to start coming up into these. So I'll add more red. Ah, too much red. So maybe, nope. Too many dark. So, I'm gonna start using cobalt blue. It's a little bit lighter than the ultramarine. There we go, that's pretty decent. I probably accidentally scraped through where I wrote white there, which I don't really want any white in these darker colors, but that's not really that much. That looks pretty good for the next one. So again, if I mix pure dark to light, I can just take a little pile of this and I can add more, uh, I can start maybe adding a little bit of white in it as I start to come up into the mid-tones. So I'll grab a little bit off the side here. Now I have white over here on the cold side. because you notice that was that's a pretty warm color? As soon as I add white into it, you can see how much cooler it goes. So white is a cold color. It, make, it makes things go a little cold. See, this is getting, if I just add white into something, if you have a good mid-tone flesh tone like this and you just add white into it, it's gonna get too cold by the time you get into the lights. So to compensate for the coolness of the white, as I add more white in, you can see how that's really gone too cold. I'm gonna warm it back up with some of these warmer colors, the red and yellow. Now these are just ballpark flesh tone notes. Everyone has, actually that's kind of good for a cooler one. Sometimes you might want to have, um, you notice on the palette where the painting when it's finished, it's good to have some colors for cooler shadows as well as warmer ones. getting pretty close in there. Maybe a little more yellow. All right, so that's a pretty good mid-tone. That's coming up. Those are kind of close valued, so maybe I want to come up even more. I'll take that other one back. All right, so if I Start to come up more in value, maybe one of these colors. I just wanna, I wanna mix about six values of flesh tone to start with. And this seems like an extra step, an extra work, and it is in a way, but it's also really gonna save you time. The really important time is when you have the model in front of you posing and time is going by and you need to be able to make quick decisions. Drawing and painting the model is difficult, right? If it's going well, and you're looking at something and like, oh, I just need a color that's a little bit, just a little bit warmer than that. And you have to go back out of painting and figuring out where things are to mixing color. It can really slow you down. So the more prepared you are on the palette, the quicker things will go on the painting. So that's a pretty good one. And you'll notice in the um, painting demo that follows, with some of these, I'll tend to like warm them up or cool them off. It's about like that. Basically, I will go uh, like a little bluer on one side for cooler shadows. I'll tend to add a little bit more red in on the on the other side for, for warmer shadows, like warmer reflected light. Like if my hand has, you know, light reflecting off of skin, the shadows warm up a lot. So if I wanted these shadows to be warmer, I can just red it a little bit. Right, so we'll keep coming up. So again, look how much colder it gets as soon as I put white in the painting. And the paint, rather. 
I guess this could be considered a painting if you want to be pretty loose about it, but see it goes kind of gets chalky. So again, to compensate for that coldness of the white. I'm going to warm it up more as I add more white. I just really keep adding these. My highlight color is really only going to have, uh, it's not going to have any blue in it. So I needed a lot of blue at this and no white in these top two. Now that I started adding white, I'm trying to balance it out uh, with the warm colors. That's a little close to the other one too. Also you'll notice it takes a lot more paint. If I, if I mix the paint in and add white, it takes a lot more paint because all these pigments I'm using, especially the warm ones, are pretty strong. I could even try uh, these more yellow to match mine. So these colors are sort of strong. So when you start getting kind of close, it's going to be more like salt and pepper, right? We're just basically balancing the primaries as we go. If it's too warm, right? If it's too orange or yellow, I'm going to add more blue or white. If it's too cool, I'm going to add more of the warm colors. It's really just balancing. If it gets too yellow, you could add red and blue. If it gets too green, right, which would be blue and yellow, you could add more red. That's really just getting the value right and balancing the uh, balancing the primaries. That looks pretty good. Let's see. That looks pretty close to my lit flesh tone. So let's try highlight color. So for highlight color, since it was taking me so much paint to lighten up those other colors. I want to clean everything off. Because I want it to really be bright. So let's just start with white. I'm going to make sure the white doesn't have any other stuff in it. And just add warm color into it, right? I'm just going to add some yellow and red into the white. So this is uh, a little pink. Let's see. Maybe that's a little too pink. That is too pink. If it's too pink, I'll just yellow it a little more. So for the highlight color, you really only need a tiny dot of the cadmiums in the white to be pretty bright. There we go. That's a little pink up there still, so maybe I'll yellow it more. All right, so just really balancing it out. At this point, I really have white as my cool color, or a blue. The white almost mixes like blue in the high key range. So I'm really using a version of the primaries where white is like blue with this much white in it. And I'm balancing it with the red and yellow. So it was staying too pink. I don't want to look, make things look like they're hot dog color, so. There we go, that's pretty good. So this gives me a basic set of flesh tones. And again, we all have different flesh tones, but I want to be able to make decisions quickly. If I have to nudge these, add a little bit of uh, earth tone yellow or something into it, I've, I've basically only mixed them with the primaries. And it's much easier to nudge something that's about right and have a clear range of value available to you than it is to like start from scratch and make a lot of little color decisions. So let's get started on an actual painting. Now we're switching over to time lapse. I almost deleted this first part, but I thought it'd be good for you guys to see me fail and restart. See, I scrapped it, started on a new one, make sure I can actually fit her on there. Now I'm just starting with the gesture, the main masses, uh, the spine, I want to get the weight bearing leg. Starting with only the ultramarine blue burnt sienna mixed together like a mixed black with no white in it. Trying to get the gesture down first, then I'll start measuring. I want to estimate first and then measure. You can see the little marks there, there's uh, head heights marked off, axis of the shoulders. And I used the palette knife to mark off a head height and then just counted head heights down so I could verify how well I was seeing the model. This is a really important stage. You really want to make all your corrections at this stage. It's much quicker if you can correct in this stage than if you start to get the flesh tones to look right. So we'll go back to time lapse now.
And now I'm starting to build things up a little bit, looking for axes of the hips, pelvis, adding inner face a little bit, refining the drawing, correcting. Now I'm taking a guess at the darks on her. And maybe it's a rough estimate, looks a little red right now. I put little spots of color on there to test it. So you notice me laying in the surround behind the model there at the end of that last little time-lapse segment. So all I have now are the shadows and the surround. And I like the word surround better than the word background because painting is a relational art and the colors you're seeing don't exist by themselves. Delacroix said he could paint the flesh of the Virgin out of mud if you let him surround it with what he wanted. And the reflected light color really is in influenced strongly by the colors that are around it. Also, it's easier to correct on the model if you just have the shadow colors in, than rather you try and take a guess and go back and forth, it gets messier. So now we'll go back. I'm really trying to work dark to light, set the shadows in on the model, then the surround, and then work my way up slowly to the lights, fixing the drawing as I go. I'm also starting to keep color notes here. As a bonus, you guys will notice David Simon is back there sculpting away. Uh, at the same time that I'm painting the model. Always oh, good to have that. I can check my proportion off of his. His is always very good. He built an armature for his. Uh, anyway, keep building up. Flesh, flesh tone color notes are a really good idea. Flesh tones are subtle colors. They're hard to get. So here's a shot of the painting at that stage, panning up. You can see I'm starting to get the colors. The colors are starting to look okay to me. So as the colors start to look okay, I'm keeping track of what looks okay. Color notes are so valuable for flesh tones because it's, it's tricky. So you wanna be able to get back what you had before. Uh, you can see the flesh tones I started with are all getting modified. Her skin is, um, is a lot darker than mine and as a result, you get more color. The reflected light temperature is a little, uh, a little stronger. The light below the highlight is much warmer. And anyway, so I'm just modifying the colors to, to suit painting her as I go through the painting. So I'm slowly building my way up. You notice I put little dots sometimes to check a color before I put a lot on. Basically, that, that's another reason that that gray ground helps you move things a lot, a lot more quickly. Again, here's a closer look at the painting as we work things up. You can see I'm starting to refine the, the flesh tones everywhere, as well as the colors behind her, as well as the surround. As I have the surround going, that's also a good reason to have a lot of color for it, is you can correct your drawing as you go, starting to get her face in there a little bit. So as I get more detail, I throw some readers on so I can see it. There's a better view of David working away there as well. And just slowly working my way slowly up to the highlights and really checking, refining the color and the drawing on everything as I work my way up. You'll notice I have everything in there, the cast shadow on her as well. And now, slowly building things up more, starting to get things a little bit more towards a finish. You notice I added a highlight color on there at the end. Starting to work my way up all the way into the highlights. So you really build up your paintings. You don't just copy what you're seeing. I really made a map, set in the shadows, set in the surround after that and then work my way up through the flesh tones and use the surround to correct the drawing on her, as well as to help me make decisions about what color the reflected light colors should be. Remember that things act a little bit like a mirror in the shadows, meaning they take on the color of what they face into. So you'll notice over on her rib cage on the left, as it faces into the coolness of the room, it takes on a little bit more of that cool color, so a little bit more blue in those flesh tones. And now we'll go back to the sped up version, slowly working my way to using smaller brushes. Delacroix also said to start with a broom and finish with a needle. I was starting with uh, a brush as large as I could control and now that I'm getting down to the features, I'm starting to use a smaller brush. You'll notice also I'm using a little mall stick, which is super useful. Mollen is German for painting. So that little stick that I'm resting my hand on helps keep me from getting my painting dirty. It's just a rectangular dowel. You can get them anywhere. Well, not anywhere, but you can get them at any hardware store. Uh, if you want a really good one, you can go to House of Hardwoods. So the mall stick's useful for keeping your hand off the painting, but also if you have to make any straight edges. So you can see as I'm starting to get the flesh tones developed more, my flesh tone notes have a little bit of the warm and cool in there. So uh, next time I have Erica, I can mix these colors up ahead of time and make much better use of the time when she's posing, right? That time's really valuable. So 
also colors are hard to mix so that keeps you from having to start from scratch every time you um, make a new painting. Uh, working on paper, so I'm working on paper that I gessoed. The advantage of working on paper is it's more portable. You know, you can fit 50 paintings in the space of one stretched painting. It's also more flexible in terms of composition. You know, so I started with mapping out the model first before I put the tape on. Then I put the tape on which allowed me to sort of compose after the fact because when you peel the tape off it makes good clean edges and sort of snaps things together a little bit more. Uh, my flesh tone notes which will help me get started we will go back to the time lapse try and finish this up. Uh, you'll notice my palette has changed a lot from the start of the painting as I modified all the flesh tones I started with which were sort of stock flesh tones based on sort of generalized flesh tones um, basically based on my flesh tones, those are the ones I have the most access to and end up with very different ones for, for Erica. Now I'm going in using a smaller brush, trying to get the face right, really looking at the light overall, making sure that everything makes sense. Light is really good subject matter for paint. And really light on skin is in a way what I spend all this time on the palette trying to get at. I really want the light to tie everything together. That's why it's important that you address everything and not just put the model anywhere or think of the background as nothing. So now you notice I pulled the tape off. It sort of tightens up the painting a little bit, panning down the whole painting and the flesh tone color notes to the left. I want to encourage you guys to take flesh tone notes. Start right away because it, it really makes things go a lot quicker. So you notice I really built up the painting, started mapping it out, shadows, get the surround, and work my way up to the highlights. It's, you know, it's a good way to organize a complicated thing. Let's have a look at the palette and the painting together at the end. And I hope this helps you guys uh, break this down into a logical way of building it up that makes some sense.